Hi, I'm Prateek and in this video, we're going to talk about leverage and payoff. Two things which are super important in any derivative contract. So let's start with leverage. I'll explain this with an analogy. So imagine that you are trying to buy a home worth say 1 crore rupees. So you're paying a large amount of money to buy an asset, which is your home, for 1 crore rupees. Now, because the builders are still building the area and the flat isn't complete, they decide to give you allotment of that apartment for a margin amount that you pay up front. So let's say the builder says, pay 10 lakh rupees to actually block or own that apartment and the remaining 90 lakhs you can pay at a later date. So let's summarize this transaction and add a few more variables to it. One, you have paid 10 lakh rupees, that's the initial amount as margin, to buy one apartment worth 1 crore rupees. You have also decided that the date of purchase is going to be sometime in the future where you have to pay the balance amount. Now let's imagine that you've invested in this house over the long term and you forget about it. But something interesting happens. Around that area, a lot of development happens. The government also announces a slew of projects in that area and the value of those homes skyrocket. Many people are trying to book houses and trying to own the home. And just near the completion date of the place, there are absolutely no apartments left. And one buyer actually contacts you the owner of that home. Now remember, you've only paid a small amount, but you still own that entire apartment. The new buyer approaches you with a new price. He's willing to buy the apartment from you at 1.2 crores. Now it's interesting to note that you paid 10 lakh rupees to own the entire home worth 1 crore, but you're making a 20 lakh rupee profit. That's a 100% gain on your initial investment. This is the definition of leverage, where you pay a small amount of money to control a much larger asset. And all your profit and loss is calculated on the actual asset value and not the margin you put up. So your ROI, your returns can be very, very high. It could be in double digit percentage on the minus side or even the plus side. This is what makes leverage interesting and really dangerous because a small amount of movement can actually mean a very big change for your initial investment. So let's see how this is calculated. We'll put some numbers and understand how this actually works. So let's understand leverage in the context of a stock. Now let's suppose the contract value of a stock you're trading is 10 lakh rupees and the margin you're putting up is 1 lakh. So as you can see, the leverage over here can be calculated if you divide the contract value divided by margin. So 10 lakh rupees divided by 1 lakh gives you a number 10. This means that you are leveraged 10x or 10 times compared from your margin to the contract value. This means for every 1% move in the underlying, you will experience a 10% profit or loss on your main initial investment. So a 10% movement here can actually mean a complete wipe off of your initial margin money. And one way to actually get to this number very quickly is by doing this simple calculation. Once you have leverage is equal to contract value divided by margin, in this case, it was 10x. All you need to do is divide one divided by leverage. So one divided by 10 will give you 10%. This means a 10% movement against your position will wipe off your entire initial margin. So as you can see, a 10x leverage can have a huge impact on your initial margin. But let's make this a little interesting. Suppose the margin was not 1 lakh, but 50,000, and the total contract size remained at 10 lakhs. Your leverage now is 20x. This means all the market has to do is go against your position by 5%, and your entire initial margin is completely wiped off. So the point is very simple, use leverage very carefully. It's actually a double-edged sword. People assume that the market will move in their favor, doubling their capital, but usually that may not happen and you could lose a large amount of your capital very quickly. So stay away from leverage as much as you can until you really understand risk management. Another important part about understanding derivatives is the payoff graph. The payoff graph is a visual representation at what points do you break even, make a profit, 
or possibly make a loss. But let's understand how this works in the futures context. Now over here, we have a few columns. We can see quantity, we can see possible expiry, the contract value and the profit and loss. Now let's suppose we place a buy order. I'll turn this to green. So as you can see, there are four columns here. The first one is the quantity and we know 600 is the lot size. So let's keep it at 600. That's one lot. The second column is possible expiry. This means that these are possible expiry prices on the day of expiry. So let's assume that we have 1710, 1700, 1690, 1680, 1670. There could be other numbers as well, but we've made a 10 step difference between the possibilities. And then as you go lower, the numbers increase. So 1720, 1730, 1740 and so on and so forth. These are the possible expiries in our Excel sheet. And then we have the contract value. Contract value is simply nothing but the quantity multiplied by the current price, which is in the possible expiry column. You'll get the contract value, which also gives us a PL. Now, for a PL, you need to have a position for a profit and loss. So let's assume we bought 600 shares at 1710. And if markets expire at this price, it's a break even. There's no profit, there's no loss because the market is at cost. Now, as we move upwards from 1720 to 1730 and so on and so forth, the profit keeps increasing linearly. So a 10 rupees increase in price gives you a 6,000 rupee profit and a 10 rupees decrease in price gives you a 6,000 rupee loss. Again, if it's a 20 rupees increase in price, it gives you a 12,000 rupee profit and a 20 rupees decrease in price gives you a 12,000 rupee loss. So it's exactly the same on either side, giving you a linear graph. So if we take the PL and we make a graph out of this, the payoff diagram is a straight line moving upwards. This is our break even point, that's our entry point. And then you have losses here and profits here going in the same step linearly. This is called a linear structure of a payoff diagram, but there are also non-linear graphs as well, which you'll see in options when we touch that in the next module. Another thing I'd like to point out is that if you weren't a buyer, but a short seller at this point, the graph would be exactly a mirror image of what you see here. That means if you earned 6,000, the person on the other side saw a 6,000 rupee loss and vice versa. This is exactly why futures and options or derivatives in general are a zero-sum game. Key takeaways from this video are 